Welcome to the second part of ending the OOP nightmare. Let me show you how to name our animals today. Let me go ahead and use this special init function. This is referred to as a constructor. So this function is called when you create a new object. So here, whenever I use animal with parenthesis, it will basically execute this init function. In the constructor, we can give our class its initial configuration, which is in our case, the name. Now let's come to the self argument. Basically, in a class, all methods get this first argument by default, even if you don't pass it to them while calling the method. For example, you can see, even though I didn't pass anything to the sleep method, it still works. So this first argument basically gives us the current object. Let me explain to you what I mean by the current object. If the dog is calling the method eat, then the current object will be the dog. Whereas if the cat is calling the sleep method, the current object would be the cat. Now that we know what the self argument is doing, we can go ahead and name our animals. Just how we could access methods using the dot operator, we can create attributes or features of an object using the dot operator too. Something like this. When I run this now, you'll see it says Jerry for both, but that's not fun, is it? I want to give it different names when I'm creating new animals. Here is where our constructor comes in. Let's take a name argument in the init function like this. Now we will set the object's name to this argument. Now you might wonder, how will I pass the value to this init function? We can simply give it the name as the argument here. I told you that instantiating a class automatically calls the constructor. Python internally passes the current object, which is self, and the argument, which is Galaxy Destroyer, to the constructor. And there you go, we have named our animals as well.